We are the number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. Now, in this episode, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by our audience. And the way we open the episode is with an introductory portion. Today's intro was 40 minutes long, and we talked about a lot of current events and studies and had a lot of fun. After that, we got into the fitness questions. Let me give you the breakdown of today's episode. We started by talking about hemp oil from Ned. I took a lot of it the other night, and it felt like an edible. Ooh, <laughs> so Sal got a little high. Kind of interesting. Anyway, uh, Ned makes the best high-quality hemp oil extract you'll find anywhere. There's a lot of hemp oil out there. Most of it's garbage. Not Ned. It's third-party tested. It's high in cannabinoids. It's actually quite effective. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a discount. Just go to helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump for 15% off. By the way, if you're in the military or you're a veteran, there is an additional uh, discount. So just contact them and let them know. They also have a sleep product, by the way, that you could take before bed, make you sleep like a rock. Uh, then we talked about life after kids. It's very different when you mm. have kids. Things change a little bit. Uh, then I talked about the world's most expensive pigeon. You won't believe how much some Chinese guy paid for a pigeon. It's mind-blowing. Uh, then we talk about throwing kids. <laughs> You'll have to listen to the episode to know what, yeah, what happened there. it's not there. a sport, but it definitely happened. Uh, which led us to talking about a cool law in Pennsylvania. They made a new order requiring people to wear masks in their home yeah. when they have guests over. Uh, I don't know how they're going to enforce that. Do it. Then we talked about another state, Florida. They went a different route. Uh, they passed a law that says you can shoot people who loot. So that's wow. kind of interesting. Yeah, different ideas out there. Then we talked about our sponsor, Butcher Box. They make grass-fed meat, uh, and they deliver it right to your door. And right now, if you sign up, you get six, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's right, I can count. Wow. Six free steaks just for signing up for Butcher Box. Uh, while supplies last, all right? So here's what you got to do. Invite your friends, but make them wear masks. Go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump for that exclusive offer. <laughs> then I talk about a study that shows that smartphones just being within reach reduces your brain power. So that's right. You have a smartphone next to you, you're dumber. Uh. Then I talked about how a school in Washington now calls Asian kids white kids. Uh, I talk about the interview I did with Brett, Brett Weinstein. Uh, it's on our YouTube channel under the Third Rail. It's called The Third Rail Show. It's a good show. Go check it out. It's spicy. And then Justin talked about some local filming happening uh, by his house. Was it porn? Was it a horror <laughs> film? You decide. We don't know. That's 40 minutes. After that, we answer some questions. Here's the first question we answered. How do you practice bracing your core for lifting? The next question if I were to decide to, to work out and only do the five most important exercises, squats, deadlifts, rows, bench presses, and overhead presses, what order would you do them in? The next question, this says this person says, define fitness. Uh, sure. All right. Fitness. We'll do that we'll, after what we talk it? about the meaning of life. Yeah. And then the final question, this person says, do you have any experience helping a significant other get in shape? Like what pointers do you have? for training your girlfriend or your wife. Yeah, don't pinch your stomach. Yeah, don't do it. Uh, also, look, uh, right now we're running a huge holiday promotion. A lot of gyms are closing back down. A lot of people are working out at home. Um, in order to help people out, in order to help our listeners out, here's what we've done. We've taken our three most effective, popular at-home workout programs, combined them together, and discounted them tremendously. Okay, so we have a program called MAP Suspension, all you need are resistance bands and a broomstick. It's a full body, two month program. Then we have MAPS suspension. With this program, you just use suspension trainers. You hook them over your door and you can do exercises for your entire body. Follow the whole workout. It's two to three months long. Again, it's a full body muscle building program. The third program is MAPS HIT, high intensity interval training. So these are 15 to 25 minute short butt kicking workouts. These are high intensity. They burn a ton of calories. This program is a couple months long. You get all three programs normally will retail for $291, but right now you pay just $99.99. That's it. One-time payment, lifetime access to all three of those programs, and they can all be done at home. No gym equipment required. By the way, if you sign up, you also get a 30-day trial, meaning you can try them out for a full month, return them if you're not satisfied, get a full refund. Here's how you can sign up, or if you just want to learn more, 
Go to mapsnovember.com. That's the word maps, M-A-P-S, November.com. And it's teacher time. Oh, shit, Doug. You know it's my favorite time of the week. It certainly is. All right, we have two winners this week, one for Apple Podcasts, one for Facebook. The winner for Apple Podcasts is Discovery City. And for Facebook, Tyler Moreland, both of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size and your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out to you. And because reviews have been light, we've only been giving out two shirts each show but we're willing to give out a lot more if you put up your review on either Apple Podcasts or on Facebook. Step it up, you guys. All right. We're in. We got a good show for you today. It's like the Hodge twins. I know, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I like the way they do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's always funny. Hey, have you guys tried taking like a big dose of, <laughs> of the, the really potent Ned? Well, uh, I thought I was taking the correct dose until you corrected me. Well, you're you're immune to <laughs> yeah. everything. <laughs> just, you just do like the entire dropper like five you times. You never in a feel row. anything. That's yeah. what I did, right? Yeah. And Sal's like, "That's not right. It's yeah. supposed to be five well, drops." Well, so I, I know <laughs> <laughs> not five eye droppers, five <laughs> bottles. <laughs> no, I took two. I got the strongest dose, right? The fifteen hundred one or whatever, and I took two full droppers. Legit. And I don't know if they're going to be mad that it says wrong. I felt like I had an edible. Wait a second. So why you're still using the 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 regular full spectrum right, right now? I'm using that during the day because I like the sleep. The sleep I've like. Oh yeah, yeah. First, since they came out with the sleep, since that was mainly. I mean, obviously, I've talked about before where you know I get all hyped from speaking or doing something like that. Like, I, so I would I would then still use my my regular net to like kind of calm down. Like, that's what I've been doing yeah. during the day. Yeah, anxious, calm, be, correct. Bring down like anxiety or that feeling that you know correct. feeling of anxiousness. I would use that, but th- for sleep, the sleep is the sleep one. Here's why it, I'm not. It's I, a knockout because my sleep is so interrupted with the baby yeah. that I don't. I, you know, I want to make sure I can wake up. Yeah, you know, not that I'm too groggy or anything like that, but I want to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm. I can hear things. My own paranoia. Yeah, but the regular oil, hemp oil, the 1500 one, right? Yeah, two full droppers. I did that in like an hour and a half later. I'm like, did I have an edible? Yeah, like I legit felt like I had an edible. So I don't know. So speaking of that, mm-hmm. so I, I'm I'm I last night I thought about you as I wasn't sleeping either last night. It was like oh, Should I was, text me when the hell. Yeah, I know. I'll start talking. I, I know. I'll start seeing if you're up with. Hey, are you with, awake? <laughs> up with me? Let's right. Facetime. Yeah, it, <laughs> two o'clock. Well, this is what I thought. I said, you know, because I I've are asked you, you Jessica. You guys have the Nanit, right? You guys have the camera thing. Yeah. And so the thing that I was asking you before was. You know, um, your your previous two kids, you, their that technology didn't exist yet, and so you know you didn't have a partner who was staring at the camera all the mm-hmm. time. And so, I'm very curious if you 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 run into the same things that I've ran into with Katrina and the camera. Well, last night we had another one of these incidents of what happens when you stare at the camera. It's still at like two o'clock, so I'm out, like I'm asleep. It's like one forty five or so, two in the morning, and. I wake up to her freaking out because she's watching the camera and he goes to climb out. And she does that, you know, your partner, when she, they make that scream of like someone's in the house or like an oh, accident. You what know, a terrible way to wake up. Or when you're driving, you know, that scream and you're like, and I don't know if it's just something that's uh, innate in us where like you just, you shoot out, you know, you shoot up. Angry. Ready to, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm angry. All I'm the ready. hairs to, are standing oh, straight up on your. I'm, re- I'm awake. You know, after when, when that, I hear that like scream or fear in her voice. And here's the worst thing. When you don't have anywhere to direct it. Oh you, yeah. You just, then yeah. you get mad at them. Oh yeah. Cause yeah. yeah. Cause Jessica will do when we're driving. We'll be driving and she'll go and she'll hit me with her hand. Dude. And then I'll, uh, what and then, is that? Corinne does that to me all the time too. Yeah. It, it drives me crazy. Yeah. And there's nothing. And then I'm mad at her. I'm like. Can you like that's exactly how it stop? goes? Yeah. That's exactly how like, it goes. I down. saw this, you know, uh, unfolding like for miles. Yeah, yeah. She, she's like, you didn't slow down. <laughs> just fast saw this. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> she's so mad. Yeah. So I had one of those moments last night. So what was he doing? He was starting to. She thought he was starting to climb out of the crib. You know, and uh, he didn't. He didn't climb out. Nothing happened. Oh, that's but, gonna happen though. But ju- I, of course, it's gonna yeah. happen. And if you didn't have a camera, he would do it. <laughs> you know what I'm totally. saying? And he probably will crash the first time, and it won't go so well. But that's like part of having a kid, you know. 
where she just saw the beginning of it and screamed, you know? And I'm like in a dead sleep. So I shoot out of the bed, oh like, ready to fight somebody. Yeah. And I'm asking her, what's going on? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? And she's just like, I think he was going to get out of the bed. What do you, mean? <laughs> you, what do you mean you think he was going to get out of the bed? You screamed like I that? I had a that? dream. It, 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 oh. it seemed real. So yeah, I was I was wide awake last night. And Yeah, little kids are funny. <sighs> when they're that small, you can see them, they can do some falls that... Well, would kill you as an adult because well, you're 200 it, pounds. They weigh nothing. It's physics. Yeah, and they, yeah, just bump. they weigh nothing, and they're they're uh, a foot and a half from yeah, the ground. Yeah, they, <laughs> just, they just they just bump. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean, yeah. I remember once my son literally flipped off the slide like bink bink bink. Now, if I did anything remotely like that, yeah, broken bones. Oh, I'd be, oh, that's the other thing too. The dex, I'd be dead. The, dead dex, uh, the dexterity that they have, like in their joints and how limber and flexible they are, like it's yeah. They just sort of bounce around. Yeah, yeah. they hit their head. Dunk. Yeah. So yeah, we, ah, ha- we had that. We also, okay. I mean, you don't want it to happen. But, yeah, no. you, know. you know something that uh, I love. This is what I love about Katrina too. Is like um, <clears throat> so. Last night we had, um, and I, I try and. You gotta I, follow it up with a nice story. I am yeah, gonna follow okay, it up. Good, good, good like job, that. dude. Yeah, I'm getting better yeah, at this. Yeah, I, getting, I gotta do that more yeah, often. I'm getting better at this. <laughs> Whew, we gotta so, assist you on this. Uh, yeah, I, so I'm trying to become more cognizant of um, us taking time as parents to like literally uh, shut down and we just talk for a few hours with no distractions, no television, no other people, just like sitting in the living room talking to each other about our son. Because it's really easy, and, I, and I'm sure all parents can relate to this. You know, you you get wrapped up in in work and raising the kid, and you know if you do have those moments of like peace and quiet for an hour or two, you normally are doing something whether you're reading or you're watching a movie or just decompressing or maybe being romantic. So there's not a lot of these moments, and I'm trying to be better about picking up that we haven't done that in like a week or two. So making sure that like, and it's been great because uh, it allows us to check in with each other and, and things that we are seeing in in like Max and behaviors mm-hmm. and stuff. And so we were both sharing like, you know, are we are we starting to see like our, our personalities like come out uh, in him yet? And she's like, you know, he's got this thing that he he can like manipulate already. Like he he sees like I told, <laughs> whose trait is that? Well, <laughs> I, well, I think we yeah. both kind of have that a little oh, okay. bit. You know, say Katrina's like I thought she was trying to put it on you. No, no, I was like, <laughs> yeah, because she she's got that in her too. You know, and I, it manipulates such a strong word because it is that's what it is right now at this age. But it's it's his way of getting way his way without crying or fighting or doing other things. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things that uh, I, when I put him down, I've shared this on the show before. I didn't share with you guys that. Uh, I allow him to like work out all this energy on me, right? Like, so the routine is when we go to bed, he, uh, you know, uh, we go in the room, it's pitch black. I, I sit in the rocker with him. He is probably finishing his bottle up. As soon as his bottle's done, he throws his bottle on the ground. And then he goes through this little phase of, you know, headbutting my chest and like, you know, flipping over, talking and laughing. He's and, got all the, we got to get all the wiggles out. Right. And yeah. I, so, and my routine is I don't, it's pitch black while he's doing this and he's in my lap and we're on the rocker. I don't say anything to him. I'm completely silent and I just allow him to do it. Headbutt me, kind of grab on me, pull on my beard, like roll around. And, and I just kind of do this thing where I don't let him get off of me. You're so doing if, like Aikido with him. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I'm just kind of, and, and then eventually. <laughs> Luck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, too far. Eventually, he wears uh, down and then he 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 falls asleep. What uh, our nanny and Katrina's mom both are guilty of—they have a hard time sometimes putting him down because he knows that once he gets down to the ground and he can go play or move around, like he'll convince them that they're he's not ready to go to sleep yet, and so they end up having to like forfeit the get like it's over. Like once you let him down and move around, or you communicate to him. He's like, he knows he's not going to have to go down. He'll Mm -hmm. just keep playing and he'll be fun, right? So they have a heart. It's like, and it's, you know, grandma doesn't want to be all hard on him. He's like, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm I'm, playing. Yeah. I'm playing. I'm talking to you and we're having fun. And so then they go, oh, he's not tired. And so, and Katrina are like, no, he's tired. He's just running game on you right now. (laughs) He knows knows that if you like talk to him and you play with him while you're trying to play, you you cannot get behind the eight ball with kids and sleep. Yeah. Especially at that age. Like they Mm -hmm. miss a nap or a couple hours, you're going to pay for that yeah, later. Yeah, there's it's going to come up. Yeah, oh, they yeah. get crazy. Yeah. Well, what makes you uh, realize now like or at least for me it makes me realize why so many parents like when I was a single guy with with friends that had kids you're always like, dude, you never come out, and yeah. you always leave by seven, and like, you know, have you seen the latest movie? <laughs> no. Yeah, they're they're always like that, right? But then I realized like, wow, how much you 
value the routine because when they're on the routine you're screwed for a, for a while yeah yeah you got to be on that routine that's what makes it so uh, so difficult it's like i remember when i first when my son was born you know saturday mornings used to be able to sleep in because friday night you stay up late or whatever kids don't sleep in when they're that age yeah no. so you go out you stay out till two o'clock in the morning yeah you're still up at 6 a.m., so you're not going out no more because yeah. the kids ain't going to let no you. There's no appeal there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. there's nothing at all, yeah, dude. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Hey, dude, did you ever take care of that side of the couch there? Yeah. <laughs> Scotch guard yeah, or the, anything? The, the, yeah. the, the, the jizzy side? The j- uh, <laughs> your dog was, your dog was oh, having a good time that, on that. That clip that Andrew got was so great, dude. That I'm was, serious, though, because you got because he did. There was some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't nothing. He turned it. Over. Well, I've already decided that this is this is kind of his seat right here. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, it's, okay. like it's a, that's yeah. His, that's, next time we have guests, you got to come in here with a black light. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah, what happened no. over don't here? Don't do that. Don't do oh, that. Oh my god. Yeah. Hey, speaking of animals, dude, did you? You guys, you guys want to hear some some cool news? Yeah. The most expensive pigeon of all time was just uh, sold. Did how much, uh, how much Mike was Tyson it? own it? No. Uh, a pigeon? I I had no idea. Okay. So a champion racing pigeon sold by a Belgian trainer. Wow. So can you, you guys want to guess? Wait, wait, wait. Pigeons race? They, they race them somewhere? A- apparently. To what? Like, how? How do they do that? I don't know, Doug, could you Google pigeon pigeon racing, please? Pigeon, no, I know they I'm, deliver messages, right? Not anymore. So, okay. <laughs> or or they, maybe after the apocalypse, we'll go back they, to the, Yeah, they, we'll go back to pigeon uh, carriers. How yeah. do we race these things? I'm, this is interesting. All right. uh, so they were sold on an auction. Through hoops. You know. And um, yeah, so guess, what, you guys want to guess how much this pigeon sold for? Well, Remember, we, it's a pigeon. Yeah, maybe $1,000. Uh, uh, 500 bucks. One point nine million dollars. Shut up! I swear to God. Stop. And what's the what's how long does what a happens pigeon- when a, yeah that, like what an investment like a cat just comes out now. Oh, did you see that Nature's Metal clip of the cat who got that bird? No, uh, I love that channel. No, no, no. oh, it's one of my. I favorites. think it was Justin who got me turned on to that one. I love it, dude. I do too. Like it, it was a it was a, a rainy day. One point four. No, that's one point four pigeons flying. Thou- okay, so what are they? Well, doing? that was a majestic uh, picture they had of them. on race day. So they they take the pigeons and I think oh they release them by the hundreds or thousands of kilometers away from their lofts and then they let them go and then they see who gets there first. Okay, all right. Okay, so that's, that's the race. I mean, that's One really point exciting. Nine million dollars. So the name of the pigeon is New Kim, two year old bird. Uh, it was sold on an auction website. New Kim, like Newcomb? No, just oh. New and then Kim, okay. like our dear leader Kim. Oh, I see. Yeah, and uh, a Chinese buyer uh, bought the the racing pigeon. So, how, what's the from China? What's yeah. the uh, life? What's the China. life expectancy of a, a pigeon? I have no idea. No, I'm serious. That's I have it. no idea. They don't, birds don't live very long. Yeah. yeah. Well, two years old is already sold for 1.9. He's hit his peak. Well, obviously it's, they're betting on these races, right? So yeah. this is like your uh, race horse making up. Yeah, your race horse, your stud uh, pigeon. I just had no idea you could make that much money with a pigeon. Well, I, I didn't know. even know they they I didn't know they have rate pigeon races, dude. To start with, it's obviously they got some opportunities out there. Yeah, the pigeon market. Dang, I didn't oh, even know. Fifteen years. Oh, that's wow, a, that's a long time. So and he was two years old. Oh, yeah. I mean, think about that. Yeah. That's now that makes a little oh, more sense. Yeah, in, he, oh wait, in captivity. This is all. This is kind of a sad fact. We, what a weird uh, website, Pigeon Facts. <laughs> In captivity, pigeons commonly live up to 15 years and sometimes longer. In urban populations, however, pigeons seldom live more than two or three years. Uh, whap, so there's whap, whap. that's not good living in the urban no, areas. They're not doing well there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, uh, I remember when I was a kid. This is a sad story. Hmm. When I was a kid, uh, I went to the beach with my family, and there were these teenagers. Uh, remember when you were like Ooh. 10 or 11? Yeah. How teenagers were like. There's teenagers over there. Remember that? When you were like 10 or 11? Yeah. It's like a big deal. Yeah. So it's like this group of teenagers, and they were feeding birds bread, but I saw them uh, uh, packing the bread with uh, Alka-Seltzer. Alka-Seltzer. Oh, those assholes. Yes, oh, dude. I've never even heard of that. Yes. Oh, they explode. No, I don't. They didn't explode. Do they explode? I've seen them explode. Real? What? <laughs> I just saw them shitting. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, they, I've seen one explode in the air. Really? I don't know no. what they gave him. <laughs> yeah, dude. What? <laughs> that's serious. Like a fuck, that's a cherry bomb, bro. That's not a fucking Whatever al- it was. Dude, I thought it was Alka Seltzer, though. Swear to God. Alka Seltzer is supposed to make a bird blow up. Get out of here. Dude. So it, something with their stomach. So what I've happened? Seen it, it. it flew up in the air and then just poof. Yeah. 
Well, no. Just yeah, just exploded. No, oh my no, god. No. Yeah. Well, I saw the ones I saw where they were just shitting on all the people at the beach. Which wow. Now I'm thinking no, back. That's hilarious. Messed up too. Yes. Yeah. Hilarious. Kind of mean. Well, that does make sense. Yeah. Anyway. Yes. Oh, dude. So, it, so the other thing is to like in in uh like I heard that they they actually like cook them up like squab is the name for it, right? Like, for pigeon food. Yeah, pigeon meat. Like some restaurants still like offer uh pigeon uh as. A delicacy or Ugh. something. Yeah. Pigeons well, are like rats. Isn't that, look at that up. Isn't, I think it's called squab. It, well, isn't it? Was that? Are you talking about what was in Billions where they put the blanket over their head and they eat the little bird? Oh, that no, was, that's different. That, that's something else, right? Yeah, that's something else. It is a young, unfledged pigeon. Yeah, see, squab. Wow. It looks like a little chicken. Yeah. Wow, how did you know that random fact? I just, you know, it's all in here. Yeah. yeah it's just, just full of wor- worthless information. <laughs> yeah. 100%. It's, it's good podcast stuff, though. Whatever it, it, you guys it, don't know, I know. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's how it works. Wow, that's interesting. When my dad was a kid growing up in Sicily and they were poor, um, he used to go up to the hills and he would, he told me these stories. He would take this uh, this tape or glue, and put it on a branch, mm-hmm. and then birds would fly and get stuck on it. Mm-hmm. And then he'd go over and he'd kill them all. And then his mom would put them in the sauce. Wow. And they'd have meat sauce with Is birds. That true? Yeah. Wow. That's what my dad told me. We used to catch bats, but we didn't eat what? them. What? Yeah, yeah. You ever done that before? Don't eat a bat, dude. You yeah. take a, the last time someone ate a bat, COVID. my God. You take yeah, a, you take a, uh, a a white towel, and then you you wrap like a, a, a rock, like it's about a softball size, and then you, when the bats are flying around when you know they're at night, you take it, whoosh, throw it straight up in the air. The bat will come bite onto the towel and then the rock takes it down and it knocks it out and so he'll come back to life so you don't kill him it just knocks him out <laughs> so you can go over and very this, gently hey this is the type of shit we used to do as a kid right go fuck with You're a bat in the country. For like, yeah, yeah yeah this is country type yeah, stuff country stuff yeah you go mess with the bat you got about five minutes or so before he wakes back up and then flies off again wow uh, no wonder the bats came back yeah, with yeah. The i used to blow up anthills that was my thing what yeah. What do you do? Put like I was a, a little country too. You yeah, put a fire, a, a yeah. firecracker. In yeah, there? you put a little like cherry bombs and like you know Don't like you get black cats and whatnot. Oh, it got all over me. And, oh. they, and, they, and they would be on fire <laughs> too. Like a terrible <laughs> idea. Yeah, it was stupid. <laughs> you light it, you know, from afar. It goes, and then all of a sudden, boom! And then they all fly in the air, and, and you realize you're going to get rained on oh. by fired ants. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, and they make little like screaming noises. <laughs> No, they don't. They do. This they do? Terrible. Yeah, it's, I think it's just like pressure. We're going to get hammered by PETA. Hey. I think. <laughs> They're yeah. ants. I was Spe- what do you want? I, Spe- I'm, I'm just going insects. Speaking of animals, dude, this, uh, well, or insects, this is this was t- it's terrible yesterday. I'm ready. I'm getting ready to be on a podcast where I'm going to get interviewed and the guy's going to do it on Zoom. So I'm setting up the, the phone and the stand or whatever. And I go to close the drapes. And we have drapes that are like cream colored. So they're kind of whitish or whatever. And there's something weird on the drapes about the size of a, I don't know, a quarter or a silver dollar. I'm like, what is that? That's kind of, it's white like the drapes. A spider. Oh, there was a white spider. A white sp- spider. That, Cam- ew, camouflage spider. Creepy. That is the most disgusting Ugh. thing of all time. I don't like spiders that are not, that are a different color. Well, that kind of reminds me of the Mandalorian <laughs> uh, the second one. Just not down with yeah, it. Yeah. All the, the, Did you see that episode? The, the, all the spiders. The, the second that, one? Yeah, yeah, where they all kind of came after him. I was so disappointed in only 32 minutes, man. What's uh, up, what's up with that? I know. They're, just, they're so short. Yeah. I, I look forward to that show so much, and I was yeah. like, I felt- that Well, that was, was kind of the weakest episode. The, 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 the first one came out with a bang, and then the third one was, was fantastic. Why are they doing that with the short episodes? Uh, I'm looking to you, Justin. Yeah, you're the- well, because they got to carry out this whole string it all out as a series. So I'm sure that you know they got to like. That's it. a cheap way to do it. We should sure. cut, we should cut this podcast. It's really into just yeah. three episodes. Yeah, it's really <laughs> yeah. this could be just a long movie, oh, you man. know, and then they're just kind of chopping it in different scenes. Oh. Did Katrina not send you the Star Wars thing last night? What Star Wars thing? Oh, I'm texting her right now because I wanted I wanted you to read it. There's like some I can't believe you're not up on this. There's like a bunch of like. Conspiracy, Mandalorian, Star Wars, <laughs> fucking news going around. Oh, is this when everybody well, not got the mad? Egg, not the eggs. No, 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 no. Not Something that bullshit. Different? Not a bunch no, of fucking the... social justice warrior okay. stuff. It's literally like Star Wars fans that are like talking about what's going. on. I can't believe you didn't know it's. Oh man, I'm gonna get it since. So we watched. Right. I, I haven't stayed up on it. I got schooled the other day by like an extreme Star Wars fan. For real? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, in your DMs or what? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember what. Oh yeah, it was something about like I said like it, I'd love to see like a Greedo character. And then he he like schooled me on the actual like species, you know, <laughs> of what what that was. I don't even remember like a ro- Rodidian or I don't remember what it was. Redodians. Yeah, I'm like, 
I'm like the one that looks like him. Okay, you know, like <laughs> let's agree on that. And he's like, yeah, well, he's dead. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Yeah, Han <laughs> killed him. I, I realized that. Oh man, we watched Mandalorian with subtitles because the baby was like in the corner over there. So we it was like really low with subtitles. And oh every, man, what a shitty movie every, to have to watch. Like every that. every time the frogs, the little frog people were talking, yeah, they do that or whatever. But then the <laughs> subtitles, <laughs> yeah, the subtitles would say speaking in frog. <laughs> Every time. It gives you nothing. My son and I were cracking up. It's so funny. Oh, they're anyway. speaking in frogs. Dude, there was this, uh, I saw this sign today. So sometimes I look up weird news and funny things. There was this this French school that put up a sign. I got to see if I could send it to Doug and see if he could put it up on the on the TV for you guys to, <laughs> to, to look up. So they put up a sign and it's a sign and it looks like a a parent throwing a child over the gate. What? Yeah, and it's like, don't do this. <laughs> okay, so Doug, don't maybe do this. Yeah, maybe you could pull this up here. I'll, I'll show you guys. Yeah. So apparently, there's a school in France, and when the school is is when they're in session, they would close the gates. <laughs> That's a funny sign. And there were there were actually parents that were throwing their kids over the gate. They were to late. get them there on time. <laughs> <laughs> it becomes a sport, just like kid chucking. Yeah. 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 So it says here that <laughs> they put up signs and skate showing a cartoon of a parent sending a small <laughs> child to airport. Look, look, look at them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, don't, don't do this. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do this. Yeah. It's not worth it. Yeah. And so, you know if they had to make a sign that it's been happening for it, a while. It yeah. happened, and it said there were a few scattered incidents where, <laughs> where kids were tossed, their children were tossed over the fence <laughs> because they were late. You know, there's some stuff you don't, you shouldn't have to make signs. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've always wondered about that. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, here's the deal. I, I, the kind of parent that throws their kid over a fence mm -hmm. care, doesn't give a shit about a sign. Like, yeah, yeah, they're not yeah. going to look at a sign and be oh, like, yeah, right. oh, man. Wait, what, what a good oh, point. Oh, we can't do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what a good point. That yeah. kind of parent, they don't give a shit <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> about a sign. So, anyway, you're did not you going to be late? Yeah. Speaking of ridiculous stuff, did you guys hear about Pennsylvania? Yes, I did not. Well, Please ma tell me. Mandatory mask indoor. So if you have, apparently, if you have guests, <laughs> this is I know it's so funny, right? If you have guests in your uh, home that are Lord. not in your that don't live with you, so let's say you have your family member or someone over, uh, then they have ordered that you wear a mask in your house. Now here's yeah. the problem with that. Forget the insanity of the whole thing. Mm. How the hell do they enforce that? Yeah. Like what yeah. are they going to do? Yeah. Passing rules and laws that you can't enforce. Just is a stupid idea. I feel like they're just like they just like. Well, isn't that isn't love that like, telling people what to do now? It's just like this. Ah, let's yeah. tell them what else can we make. Yeah, them do? Isn't that the same thing that like the parents that ground their kid for life? You know, when they get so angry, like that's like exact same thing. Like you can never live up to yeah. that grounding. Like you doing that is yeah. ridiculous. It's it's not going to do anything for it's you. It's like yeah. telling your kid, you know, uh, okay, when you're at school today, don't don't do don't say bad words at all. All right, cool, thanks. Right. Yeah, no problem, Dad. I'll do exactly what you say. Yeah. You got to be able to enforce whatever law or order you put forward. So either A, this is my theory, either A, these uh, political leaders or whatever are so arrogant that they actually think that they'll just pass an order and people would be like, okay. Do you, no, see, yes, I, sir. Or, I think it's catering to the people that are that are f f scared, that are afraid of all that, and, they, and they're and they the ones that are screaming at people when they see people yeah. on the street. You're that just giving them ammo to go harass that's, their neighbor. Exactly. That's what I think. I think it's- Yeah. More, didn't you hear the latest order? Yeah. <laughs> it's more pandering. That's what <laughs> I think. Oh, it's, shit. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> what, would you, what would you do? Hey, hey, imagine hey, that like conversation, you know? Hey, oh. Speaking of stuff in other states, did you see what Florida did? What? That passed for uh, look this up, Doug, because I want to make sure I, I've, I'm not off on this. So I don't know, we're it's legal you... to shoot looters. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Wow. He, they, yeah, it made it legal to shoot. It be like the wild to west out there to defend businesses. If, I, if looting ended overnight in Florida, you... I mean that's that's <laughs> like, what's going to happen immediately. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, that's insane. Do you guys remember? It's going to be effective. Okay. Do you guys remember the 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 rooftop Koreans during the? Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember that? Yeah. When the no. Yeah. The Rodney King in LA. Yeah. The Rodney King riots. So <laughs> so duh, yeah, that's true. You could you could allow people to shoot looters. That allow people that's so Yeah, that's what I That's uh, how you end it. No, I mean uh, that was a thing back then. I remember that. Yeah. Like the, the business owners that were just really like you Doug, know aggressive about look, protecting their business. Look up rooftop Koreans. Okay. So during the Rodney King riots in LA, right? This is that was the the video for people that know there, there was a, a guy who got beat by cops, someone videotaped it. Uh, anyway, the cops got acquitted. Uh, so for whatever reason, there were huge riots in LA and Korean business owners, there were a few Korean business owners that <laughs> look at the, they got on the rooftops to protect their businesses with their, their 
you know, their AK 47s rifles, or whatever, yeah. rifles and pistols. And they were the businesses that didn't get looted. The only ones. Yeah. Because yeah, it they, actually works. And they, see, look, they call them the rooftop Koreans. Oh my God. I don't remember this. Oh, you don't dude. remember this? Yeah. No, yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I remember the nobody, riots and everything, but I did not remember this. Nobody fucked with their businesses. Yeah. Look at, see how they put like their cars in front and they just got on the rooftops with their rifles. And, oh my God. And there you go. And now, and uh, nobody, like, as far as law came after them or messed with them at all. Dude, they, the cops no. had their hands full. Right. Remember? Like, what are they going to do? You know? Yeah. Well, that's kind of, yeah. So, I mean, I think it's terrible. I think that's, uh, I would be horrible. I mean, you don't want it to resort to that, but mm -hmm. also, yeah, you got to think about people just trying to protect what they've uh, created. Especially, so here's the part that makes me a little frustrated. There's parts of the country where the mayors tell the, the police to stand down. So these people are going in and destroying businesses, setting things on fire, oh, yeah. causing violence, and then the cops are ordered by the and mayor. Then they lose control of their entire city. Yeah, and the mayors are literally ordered to stand down. And yeah. so here you are. Let's say you're in your business. Let's say you have built it from scratch. Maybe you're an immigrant, and you're like, if I lose this, I'm totally screwed. So you're in your business, and you're like trying to prevent looters, and they're coming in, and police aren't helping you. They're not yeah. doing anything. Wow. You Do know? you think any other state is going to go that extreme like Florida? I, I, I doubt it. Texas, maybe? Yeah, maybe. I doubt I it. I don't know, even there. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's uh, pretty crazy. Anyway, yeah. let's talk about some good news. Yeah. <laughs> Switch it up. Butcher Box is giving away six free steaks when people sign up. <laughs> Excellent transition right I know. there, right? <laughs> For I mean, reals. No, six, that's exciting. That's a, that's a good deal. Six free steaks when people sign up. Yeah. They're going nuts. Does it say what type of steaks, Doug? Do you know? <clears throat> yes, it is going to be uh, a combination of New York strips and top sirloins. Mm. Nice. Wow. Very nice. I like, do you guys like New York? I love it. Yeah. yeah. That's I'm, one of my favorites. I'm a ribeye guy. Ribeyes are rib good, too. Yeah, ribeyes normally what I get from them. Although the fillets. tips the and fillets. Yeah, their fillets are amazing, too. Yeah. Yeah. Fillets are, are my favorite. Fillets are not bad, but you got to really cook them right. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. otherwise it's too lean and it doesn't. You always get the fillet. Yeah, I always get the fillet. Well, yeah, and again, it, yeah, it, it makes it, it. It all depends on like it has to be perfect. Like all the the cooking has to like be spot on. You know what I hate about fillets? The one thing you go to the when you go out to eat, we're all going out. I'm hungry, right? I want like a 12 ounce steak. Mm -hmm. You ain't gonna get a 12 ounce fillet. It's always like a tiny little yeah. piece of meat. I mean, you're just well, kind of condensing eight. it into the to the real like goods. They normally do a six and an eight. It's rare that you yeah, see it bigger than that's that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. And so that's not that fun for me. No. Uh, <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? That's why I like the ribeye. Yeah. You yeah. Can get a big ass ribeye. Anyway, dude, I read a study on Science Daily. Great site, by the way, if you want to read like up and up studies. Um, they did this study on people using their smartphones and kind of wild what they found. So when people had a smartphone within reach, so just within reach, it was next to them in their pocket or whatever, their cognitive function declined. Wow. When they took the smartphone out of the room, they actually had better uh, cognitive performance. Just because of the distractibility? I think For it's, sure. I think it's because people feel like they can rely on their smartphone without oh, realizing it. That too, or yeah. maybe the distractibility. But how crazy is that? Just it being in the same room. I could definitely see that for like having the tendency to want to look something up or fact check what you're about to say. It's like, you, you know, if I have that right there, I want to make sure that what I'm saying is correct. Isn't that weird though? That's interesting. It's very strange, right? Yeah, so yeah. just because it's in the same room, uh, I'm reading the study right now. That's exactly what it was, is that just because it was in the same room, the people performed Worse, when they took the phone out of the room. They I think it's partially wow. just the the attachment you have to it. So I'm like, I, I'm like always, to, I don't know what you guys do this, but I always turn my phone face down if I'm not. I do. Yeah. Because it just just like seeing the movement on the screen, it like in, the, in my- All the notifications pop yeah, up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't even have to be able, it could be out of, out of a, like to where I can't even read it and see it, but if I just see the flashing, the moving on it, it completely distracts me. Mm -hmm. If I'm in, if I'm in a conversation with somebody and that, that, that pops up, it's hard to n not like- look over at it and see what it is. So. Yeah, and it's just rude. Yeah. yeah. You know, talking to people and then like you're just constantly like your, your, your mind is always over on your phone if it's up and you know what's going on with that. Yeah, so. but is it different though now? Maybe our generation? But yeah, it's, I was just going to say that, Sal. Like you, you see kids now, like that's like the norm. You ever see kids hanging out yeah. together? They're, they're all... It's, it's normal to be they like... text each other without talking? Having No, having or conversations. Just sitting together or they're talking to each other while looking at the phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, a bunch I of know. zombies. I know, dude. And there's arguments to say because, you know, the the the, the progression, right? The, the the future may be where we're kind of linked up with uh, computers somehow, with the interfaces connected to our brain. But scientists are arguing we're pretty much already there. Like yeah. 
people don't go anywhere without that extension, without that phone. And so, like the only the only difference between being connected to your brain or you typing your hand is the speed at which you can access yeah, your phone. I think the yeah, a, a progression to it would be to see that like almost like the augmented reality where you do see like a little bit like a notification if you're wearing something like a, a, a glasses or anything like instead of having to always pull out a device and looking looking down i think like the next thing is to be just looking normal and then you can like either block it or you're looking at something that's uh, in front of you a little bit oh uh, no i'm gonna go watch black mirror again yeah <laughs> they have some good uh some Dog good Man in reality has i think it has uh, some promise yeah but I, i'm not real excited about it yeah, yeah hey there was a school district you guys want to hear something controversial yeah so this is a good time right here so there was a school district i gotta find where this i think it was in uh washington state okay so a school district in washington state just uh, put Asian children in the same category as white children. So and es essentially what it says is, Asia, you, when you mark down what your ethnicity or whatever is, it says uh -huh. Asian and white and then students of color as everybody else. So wow. so now they're, they're considering them uh, white. Why, why the, is that? Um, because uh, they're trying to show the, the, the achievement gaps. And so here's a speculation mm. that, they're, that if Asian students were included in the other students that the achievement gap would be smaller because apparently the Asian students perform way better really well to average everybody out. So instead what they did now is put them. So they're going to do that category. same thing for like income and everything else. Cause Asians kick uh, white people's ass in like all the categories. Well, I, here's the <laughs> like, like education, income, like all that. Well, here's the deal. I don't know why. Credit, they, I think all of them, I think they, that, they need to stop breaking everybody up into these groups. And instead uh, it makes more sense to me is income or, um, you know, if you have one or two parents at home, I think that makes a big difference, right? Why has it got to be, you, you know, your ethnicity instead? Because now they're trying to gerrymander it, you know? Oh, wait, Asian kids now uh, are white. Let's put them up in this category because it doesn't fit our original model. Well, Silly to me. Yeah, what? this is just sort of the world we live in. It doesn't again. make any sense. That, that's yeah. one school that's doing that? Is that in what you Washington, yeah. And it's uh, kind of making news well, right now. figure, right? It's, it's very interesting. You and, just uh, did, you just uh, interviewed Brett Weinstein, huh? Weinstein. Yeah. Weinstein. I yeah. always say that. What, you know? So did I in the interview. Oh, you <laughs> did? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. Did he correct you? No, he didn't. But when he later on, when he said his brother's name, he said it the right way. Uh, I was like, uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, no, that episode should be up. Uh, and um, yeah, had, we had a great conversation. I like him because he's very objective, smart. Um, he's. Uh, I like having discussions with people who are objective and can really be consistent with their opinions. Right. It's really annoying when people have an opinion on something and then it, it changes to suit the the narrative. You know. Right. Right. Yeah. So he and was, he, and he's a he's lifelong liberal, right? So that's he's he is, but he's often at odds with uh, with the current what he calls the current woke movement. Mm -hmm. So and and you know, like for example, you know. He became kind of well known because he was that professor at Evergreen College. So if you don't know who he is, he people knew who he was uh, because at Evergreen College they did this day where they told white students and teachers to stay home, not come to school for that day. And he said, "Well, that's not cool. Like you're requiring me, or you're kind of forcing me. It's different if I voluntarily do it, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna come to class." And it started a riot, and his life was threatened, and the campus police were told to stand down, so nobody was – in fact, he got a phone call from the campus police, and they said, hey, we're, we were told not to protect you, so we're just letting you know, you know, you got to be you got to be careful or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So he's – uh, yeah, very objective. They put him in that intellectual dark web, uh, you with know, with like, like – Jordan Peterson. And Joe Rogan, Ben Shapiro. Sam Harris. Dave Rubin. Yeah, Sam Harris. So you have people from both political sides of the political Are spectrum. Are you still – you know, I was watching that for a little bit. I think you turned me on to that, the, the monk debates. Are they still doing that? Oh, I haven't um, seen that yeah. in a long time. I forgot all about I really, that. Yeah. I really enjoyed the Sam Harris and, and Jordan Peterson. I watched uh, all of them. Were yeah. they really good? Yeah, they were good. They're just thought-provoking. Yeah. Yeah, I watched all those too because Sam, Sam's always challenging him, which is great, and then it's great to hear them both go back. Yeah, and I mean, forth. it's like you, you don't feel like they really. I mean, of course, they're not going to like solve all the problems or anything. It's just it's interesting for me to hear really intelligent debate where there's back and forth, but mm -hmm. also they can understand where the other person's coming from and see those points, and they're good points. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think it's so important to be able to debate and discuss, especially with people who. Uh, have different opinions from you. It's so important. It was like the only way we'll get the best ideas out mm -hmm. uh, or even just know what people think is to do that, is to, to allow people to yeah, speak. you got to talk about it. Yeah, and it's also to me, it's like when people silence other people for their opinions uh, and tell them they can't speak out and force them to shut up, I feel like you're a coward. 
Mm. Like you're so afraid of their opinion that either your opinion is weak and you can't back it up mm-hmm. or you're so uh, weak and fragile that someone's words are, you can't just shut off the TV or whatever. You have to silence them. Um, it's like a, it's the sign for me. It's like the sign of a coward, yeah. you know? Oh, totally. Dude. So I, I woke up this morning I drove and I was like leaving to get here for work and I was stopped right away as I got up to like the top of our road and I was like, what's happening? There's this lady in like a, you know, like a construction looking suit with a stop sign. And then I look ahead and there's this whole film crew, production crew, and like this whole production. It looked like it was like a major motion picture or something. And they, they were like up in this really like weird, creepy road that was like abandoned forever. And I'm like, I'm wondering if they're like filming some kind of horror creepy movie. horror movie or something <laughs> like right next to my house. <laughs> That's I'm interesting. Like, this is uh, this is weird. You, you never you never read about the murders that happened up there by the yeah, I know. Yeah. That was, <laughs> That's another part of where I was going. Hey, was read like, oh, the no. article or Doug pulled the article i finally so katrina sent it over to me i want it so it the the title of it justin says uh the mandalorian the mandalorian is about to finally uh, address a disturbing jedi truth Ooh. do you know anything Ooh. about this look at a disturbing jedi truth we have to expand that doug yeah and well maybe doug could like give us kind of a little backstory well yeah i mean because she's going after the, the the black saber and i know that she's trying to kind of acquire that to bring it back to mandalore and so there was like some depth in that latest episode that i was curious about uh, what's the black saber i don't know what that is so if you saw the the first season at the end you saw uh you know that uh the the menacing guy that uh was uh, you know, I forget his name, but like he came out with the with the black saber at the very end and kind of cut his way out of his. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I remember oh, that now. right, right, right. And so yeah, she's high fighter. And so the the Mandalorians are trying to go get that. Is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. She's trying to she's trying to go acquire that again. So yeah. what's the secret about the Jedi's that she's about to reveal? Well, there's a weird part. Remember, I don't know. Remember in that episode when she talked about his sect of the Mandalorians that was like a right. religious. Oh yeah, you know, remind uh, me of like the, 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 the extremists. Like like he's the, part of the extremists. Like the well, oh, so I took it like the Game of Thrones, like the Wall. Like there's there there's like a lower class people that are in charge of kind of like like being soldiers and protecting. Mm-hmm. They never take their helmets off. And then there's like the the rich the rich Mandalorians or whatever. That's how how I uh, understood. Huh, Is uh, that wrong or no? Uh, she was saying that it was like a religious sect that was like very like uh, you know extreme, and then they, they 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 like pulled off of like the main branch of of the Mandalore. So mm. uh, yeah, they they made they almost like you know created their own cult in a sense, and mm. then and then went off. Mm. Okay. That's I, yeah. how I read it. I, I'm trying to look and read through it, but it doesn't make sense to me. I have no mm. idea. Yeah, I don't yeah. have to. It's like <laughs> a foreign language. Spot. I don't know. I'll, yeah, have to, no. I'll do some research and report back. Well, so disappointed. In you. So the original, <laughs> the original Mandalorian in Star Wars, didn't he? He was a bounty hunter. and He worked for the the Empire, right? What's that? Am I tripping? The original Mandalorian in the Star Wars? Uh-huh. Yeah, he, he was worked, a bounty hunter. And he worked for the Jet, not the Jedi for no, the- No, for Darth Vader. Yeah. He actually, yeah, hired him. And so. he was he part of that same sect? Because he never took his helmet off, did he? Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Justin doesn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Katrina brought this to I'm me. I'm counting right? on you to. <laughs> I just know it was in the movies. I haven't like read up on all like the the nuances he's, of like. She, he's she, gonna get hammered in his DMs. Now. I, I know, right? Is, get him, guys. Get him. <laughs> yeah, I know. Katrina shared it with me. Like I would care that much. I was like, what are you sharing this to me for? Yeah. Send it to Justin. I'm like, yeah. I don't care. I don't get that crazy about this. I mean, I love the show. Don't get me wrong. But oh, I'll dive into it. Like I yeah. said, I just I've been busy. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. We, <laughs> like we're working. We, I don't have time to like read we, about this shit. Yeah, we expect a, re- a recap on next episode. Yeah. He's, you're really going to get hammered in your DMs now? <laughs> yeah, I know. What are you trying to say, Justin? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not busy? I don't work? <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, my God. First question is from Twinsanity Fitness. How do you practice bracing your core for lifting? Oh, yeah. This is actually uh, quite important. Um, And uh, we tend to do this pretty naturally, usually, whenever we're trying to lift something heavy. So sometimes you'll hear trainers say, draw in your midsection. Mm -hmm. Not a good idea. Um, Really what you're trying to do is you're trying to brace your core. And the way I used to tell my clients to do this is, like, imagine I'm about to punch you in the stomach. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, so you, uh, you just brace it like that. Sometimes I fake it. And, uh, yeah, there it is right there. That's just what keep is. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, here's a little, uh, a little bit more detail, right? So, before, especially before you do a heavy lift, you take a deep breath in down into your core. So, take a full diaphragmatic breath, breathe in, and then hold your breath 
and then brace, and then then you do your left. Then after you do your left, then take a couple breaths and then repeat it. And what that does is it, it dramatic that breath inside your diaphragm plus your core bracing uh, dramatically increases the stability around uh, your spine. Um, now, when you wear something like a belt, your core is going to brace totally different. It's going to push out against the belt rather than bracing. Uh, in now, did you guys have specific uh, exercises that you like to do to teach somebody how to to? Because here's the thing too that sometimes people uh, misunderstand when they when they brace their core is holding your breath. Mm. Sometimes hold they think holding your breath. Oh, especially is if you're doing reps. Right? right, right. So were, were there exercises that you guys like to teach? I mean, obviously the fake like you're going to punch them in the stomach to get that <laughs> idea across. But did, did you like like the the four point draw and maneuver or vacuum yeah, exercises? Like right. what were almost the, like vacuum like a cat cow where then I would get to neutral spine and then they would like just tighten it up but also like go through the breathing of it while being tight. Yeah. And you know, like little like external stimulus to make sure that they, I could feel that like their abs are tight. Yeah. Uh, but also having them sit on a stability ball with their hands out. Uh, and this is just for like the rotational part of stability. Mm. Uh, so I would, I would kind of push on their hands with them relaxed versus then now brace. And then so it's like they got to focus on that uh, staying rigid and they feel the difference right away yeah. for some people that was like this light bulb goes off and you're like okay yeah. the, uh, for me the most effective way to because because you can teach people how to brace and what you need to do but then there's a difference between that and actually bracing while lifting because it, there's a bit of a skill involved and what that feels like the best thing i've ever done for that was heavy carries getting people to do like a farmer walk with a <laughs> pair of dumbbells and teaching them to brace their core while taking steps while being able to breathe and with the farmer walk you kind of gives you that feedback you've got the heavy weights or the dumbbells in your hands if you're loose with your core you start to sway a little bit you feel a little bit of a twist and so it teaches them how to brace while doing a movement so that was mm -hmm. one of my one of my favorite ways to do that next question is from 713 clown if i were to dedicate a workout to only the essential five squat deads rows bench and overhead press what order would you do them in? Oh, for, for sure squat, right? Yeah. Then, then dead, and then probably... Uh, row, bench, row. and overhead press. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how it... You know what's funny? This, yeah. just those exercises right there, you get a pretty good physique. Yeah. Oh, just, yeah. Just doing that, you know? I mean, it wouldn't be perfect because you're not getting rotation. It's a minimalist and, sort of concept, right? But you'd get a great workout. I would even take it a step further. Here's the deal. Uh, at some point, uh, I don't think it's a great idea to always squat and deadlift in the same workout. I think that your your it, mm -hmm. that mo the risk of injury gets a little high. Um, definitely if you deadlift before you squat, which I never think is a good idea. Right. But even when you deadlift after you squat. So with a routine like that, if you were super minimalist, and let's say you did uh, five sets of every exercise. And by the way, I trained a lot of clients like this often. Yeah. They'd come in and this is all we would do. Uh, I like to alternate squat and deadlift. So if you're coming in three days a week, one workout, you, we do squats. The next workout, we do deadlifts. Yeah, the next that, workout, we do squat and so on. That's well, exactly how I would train for a while. I went through a period of doing five by fives and, and that was, I would alternate my squat and my deadlifts on different days. And so I would like pretty much use it accordingly to that, but like keep those main lifts and then just keep it really simple. Uh, and I had, I had, you know, good results as, as, you know, uh, as a fact of that as well. Well, I, with that logic, you would do the same thing then with overhead press and bench too, because after you bench press, you're not you're not getting you're not able to lift the same you are on overhead press as you would do if you were completely fresh. Yeah, but the injury risk isn't there. Like yeah, but I, squatting and deadlifting the same workout. Well, your low back is you know very. Vulnerable. I mean, yes and no. I mean, if you if you bench press and then you decide you're going to go super heavy on overhead press, I would I would argue the the risk for a low back injury is is just as high. Mm, I don't it's, know, I you, it really all it is yeah. is that if you squat and dead in the same routine and you should do it in that order for mm. sure. You're 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 gonna be you're gonna be a lot weaker because you just squatted going to the dead. So you have to modify the weight. You have to do a weight that is significantly lower than what you could do as your max lift or 80, 90 percent of your lift. So that that's and the same thing goes true when you go row bench press after you do bench press. You're not going to do your max overhead press because you're definitely going to be fatigued from uh, bench press. Yeah, yeah, but you know, and I'm saying eventually, right? If you're a beginner intermediate, you're probably okay. But uh, if you look at like powerlifting routines or strength athlete routines, they rarely deadlift and squat in the same workout. Typically, it's either well, a squat. Well, yeah, because they're also chasing max lift. That's well, why. It's just you're, they're chasing after a max lift. If you're a person that's just training, this routine to me is completely fine three days a week. 
And as long as you modify the intensity of the weight, there's nothing. This is a great routine to run two, three times a week, every week. Well, this looks like uh, prephase and MAPS anabolic. Uh, MAPS anabolic prephase looks like this um, with maybe a couple of variations because you are working the entire body. You're kind of getting everything um, in there, and it, it's working every single muscle group, and it's very, very effective at sending some good strength and, and muscle building signals. I mean, you definitely can do it. I would just say at some point when you get more advanced, you might be better off alternating those two, in, in my personal opinion. But if you do do them all, uh, you will squat first. So we'll go squat, deadlift, uh, row, bench, overhead press in that. Actually, yeah, this, he, yeah, he the order, in that order. Yeah, the order is perfect. You just you just got to know that when you go to overhead press and you go to deads, you're going to be fatigued from the previous exercise. Right. So you're going to have to just and do less load. And I don't know, dude. I yeah. I, I uh, at least okay for me personally. This is just me, right? Uh, I am. I can squat and and get after it and then go into deads like a lighter load and be very controlled, safe, and not feel like I could I'm jeopardizing my form. If I go heavy bench and then I go to do overhead press, I'm more likely to you hurt myself in my low back doing that. And now this has to do with I have an interesting a, I have a bench to overhead? Yeah. Because uh, because I have an anterior pelvic tilt, so my I already have an issue with making sure that get the I, Instagram butt. Yeah, I got yeah. the Instagram butt yeah. going on. So, but I mean that's common. I mean, yeah. the, the anterior pelvic tilt is very common in, in most people. Now I have a little bit of an excessive one, so it's I have to constantly be re reminding myself to stay engaged, mm -hmm. keeping the core tight when I'm pressing good weight over my head. So yeah, I, I rarely I'll go dead to overhead press uh, because of just like the the strain of the lower back. I'll feel that like when I'm then pressing a load overhead so i don't usually stack those back to back ever yeah uh, but that's just me and my own preference right that's what i'm that's yeah I'm, but common wise right if you were to look at uh, you know you just randomly picked a thousand people's workouts you often will see a bench press and some kind of an overhead press in a workout because typically people will pair you know chest and shoulders yeah i do that rarely do you see squats and deadlifts in the same workout yeah that's you fair. really do you just don't see it very often and I think it's because people well, know they're how very to do demanding. It. Those are like the most demanding exercises. Yeah, but again, if you're beginner, intermediate, and you're smart, you could definitely do them all in the same workout. I just don't rec when you're getting strong, you're starting to really push yourself. I think you get better results alternating those yeah. two. Yeah, well, that that's the key. As you get as you get more experienced and strong, and then you are going to have a tendency to want to push the weight more. This is where it gets risky mm -hmm. is to have them back to back like that because they are so demanding. If you just went and did four or five sets of heavy squats, and then you're going to go do deadlifts with that, then absolutely you're yeah. at risk. You know what's you funny know? though? You do five sets of each of those, right? So five dead uh, squat, dead rows, bench, overhead press. That right there is better than 90% of the workouts that are on the internet. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm dead serious. Oh, absolutely. That simple, basic thing that we just said That's right now. That's the meat of it all. Like, if you want to get fit, you don't want to buy a program, you're like, whatever, I just want to do something basic that's going to work really well, and you want to do something that's better than 90% of the garbage that's out there, just mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. Next question is from LT Fitness Training. Define fitness. I can't because that's like a, it's like <laughs> defining love. It's I for, know. for every person, it's different, man. Yeah, yeah you're. I mean, what's one person considers fit esoteric. may not be fit for someone else. Like a, a bodybuilder might be very fit for their workouts, but would be terribly unfit for uh, you know running a marathon uh, or swimming, um, you know, a few laps or whatever. You, you really can't define fitness. I like saying something like health. Health might be a little bit better, in, in which case I would say you have some longevity, you're, you can move freely, you don't have any pain, you've got good blood lipid levels, you've got good insulin uh, response to food, uh, you've got decent energy throughout the day, hormones seem to be pretty balanced. But fitness is so uh, specific, and really this is something you have to define for yourself. If, you're, if you want to be able to play with your kids, go on the occasional hike, uh, like the way you look in your clothes and just generally feel good, uh, then your fitness goals are are very different from someone who wants to you know max yeah. deadlift or or whatever. I totally look at it more as a ability, uh, you know, maintaining or uh, improving abilities and an overall function uh, and capacity of the human body. So whatever that looks like for the individual, it's going to vary. And that's why it's such a hard thing to nail down and define exactly yeah. what it is. But, um, you know, from my perspective, it's, it's, if I have a goal or pursuit that's physical, 
uh, you know, it's it's really like the, the fitness is is the process to get you there or it's like something that you're constantly, um, you, you know, adopting and, and considering in your everyday practices. Mm. So now that we've covered how I think we all agree that this is, it's hard to define this. Now, do you guys have your own personal, like what I you think? I was just going to ask that. Yeah, like general fitness. So like for me, like, so I have, and I we talked about this actually on a recent podcast where, you know, I have I have a certain amount of weight that I feel like for those actually the big lifts that we just talked about that I I want to be able to do, and to me that's what being fit is for me. Like I I know I, I'm not anywhere near my max lifts on all those. That's okay. I don't need to be that fit in all those areas. I want to be make sure that I'm also not weak in all that stuff. And same thing goes for even cardio. Like by no means could I get out there right now and run three to five miles and do great at it. But if I, I could run a mile, I could run a mile right now and I could do it a decent amount of time. And so I have like markers that if I can't get under a mile under nine minutes, I'm starting to get out of shape in that area. Like that's not fitness to me in that area. So I need to get better at, at my cardiovascular endurance. If I'm not able to, you know, bench work out with 225 on bench, I know that I'm starting to lose my strength in that area. If I can't deadlift more than 400 pounds, I know that I'm losing my, and so to me, as long as I'm kind of staying, and then mobility wise, right? So if I, uh, I notice sometimes I'll get down, I haven't been in my 90, 90 in a while and I'll get like, I'll cramp just from being in the 90, 90. So I know that I'm neglecting my hip mobility. And so I kind of have all these little things that I check in with myself and I have markers for me that I say, okay, I'm, I'm pretty fit. I'm fit. I'm, I'm healthy. I'm good. I like where I'm at. Sure. I can be better in all these things, but I don't want to allow myself to go below that. Cause then I feel like my fitness is suffering, but that's so individual. Right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. For me, it's like, I, I like to, I want to be able to work out, feel good in my workouts, get a good pump. Um, I want to be devoid of major pain, aches mm -hmm. and pains. So I feel like I can move. I want to feel like I could go on a hike uh, because that's something I enjoy doing uh, when the weather's nice. I like to go on hikes. Um, I like to feel like I have a good libido um, and I like to feel like I have good, sharp energy. Uh, you know, my job involves obviously being on a podcast or being on other podcasts or doing media. And it, I, if I notice that I start to feel a little foggy or not quite as quick with my comments or my thoughts, then I'll start looking at my diet. I'll start looking at my sleep and my exercise um, because I want to feel very sharp. So for me, fitness means feeling sharp, feeling you know pretty strong, and otherwise just feeling healthy and like I can, like I said, like I can go on hikes. Yeah, I think too, uh, it's where you are in life. Uh, for me, it, it was different when I was like trying to get as uh, much out of myself as I could in, in my athletic pursuits and, you know, trying to PR. And uh, I think it's just, it's evolved now to, to a lot of what you're talking about in terms of being pain free, uh, having energy to keep up with the kids and actually like have that movement where uh, I can be explosive. So being explosive, I think as I'm aging is really a, a high pursuit for me. I want to, because that, that identifies to me if I, if I have mobility issues, or if I have uh, any kind of pains or like my the patterns throughout my day are, are limiting my abilities, uh, I want to address those things. And so uh, for me to jump and to, uh, you know, move quickly left to right and twist and do all these types of things uh, to, to play basketball, to throw a ball, to uh, kick a soccer ball, to run, uh, like it really is like heavy uh, emphasis on movement now more than ever. Uh, but I do agree. I, I try and keep certain lifts uh, in mind. Like I, I don't want to lose my strength. I don't. I still want to be able to squat. Uh, you know, somewhere around what I used to squat, and I want to keep those abilities. I want to be able to deadlift. I want to be able to bench. I want to be able to overhead press. Uh, and so I, I keep those. Uh, I co a constant check on those things. Next question is from Composed Cocktails. Do any of you have experience helping a significant other get in shape? I'm having a hard time balancing being a good or nice boyfriend while also trying to be strict or real with my guidance and advice. Who, who picked this question? Uh, I did. This is really good, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I like this question because um, this, was an, this has been an interesting journey for me. I used to have a rule that I would not uh, train uh, my, my girlfriends. I never did. Like So all through my 20s. It's a 20s, slippery slope. Well, yeah. here's what I found. Uh, I had a really – I was so passionate about the job 
I had a really hard time if like, you know, and, and every girlfriend did in my 20s so would be like, will you train me? Yeah. Or will you mm-hmm. write a plan for me? They would, they would ask like that. Right? Voice yeah, they, they do it just like that. <laughs> Please right? So, me. Yeah, right. So they, <laughs> they would ask me to do this. And uh, if I, it, whenever I would try, I would get really frustrated because uh, you know they would, you know, we, we would be working out together, and it would turn into you know giggling and flirting and mm, like not taking, yeah, not taking the form and Grab technique acid. serious, and like you know, or if I was putting them on a diet plan, you know, they followed it for like a few days and then they were off of it, and it was like. So I'd have all this kind of wasted energy in, in to helping. And I took my job so serious. It was so hard for me to like switch to this. Like it ain't that serious for her. You know, she wants my help, but then she don't really give a shit that much. And so I just made like this hard rule. Like I don't train, I don't train girlfriends. I don't do that. It wasn't until Katrina that I meet somebody who I actually train, diet and eat with. And for me, it really was, I, I waited. And for the first two years, we didn't. I didn't help her at all with any of that stuff. I waited until she came to me and like really, really, really wanted me to like dial her in on all those things. Otherwise, it comes off as like me trying to push all that on somebody who really deep down doesn't want it that bad. And that was always like this struggle in the mm-hmm. relationship. So, I mean, my advice is is to make sure that the the significant other really wants uh, the information that you 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 want to give to them because sometimes they just say it because it's like oh you're a trainer you're knowledgeable about nutrition yeah. you're knowledgeable about working out so help me out but deep down they really don't give a shit that much about it and they're not going to treat right. it the same way that you want a client to treat it's it. It's a slippery slope because you're telling your client hey you know uh, that's not on your meal plan or maybe that's outside of your micros is different than telling that to your wife or your uh, girlfriend they feel like tyrannized yeah or or like well, why am i not looking good you know my fat or what's in so you have this this slippery slope going on i agree with adam number one make sure they re- they're asking you don't approach them don't go up to them and say hey do you want me to train have them ask you and they really want to do it and then define what that looks like say hey what kind of trainer do you want do you want me to just focus on your workouts do you want me to like help you with nutrition too do you want me to call you out Right. Um, or do you want to just, you know, be boyfriend and girlfriend and I train you in the gym and, you know, and that's it. And then here's the second, here's the, the other part. Don't take it so seriously. I, I hate to say that, yeah. but I, I mean it because, mm-hmm. uh, if you value your relationship more than then that's more important, you know, sometimes being right is not as important as, uh, everybody being well, it's, happy. It's your jo- you got to remember it's your job. So it's yeah. like you're you're asking your partner to to step into your work every single day, and then it's, and then you're also asking yourself to outside of work work more. And it's just a, I mean the worst thing is to get in an argument or a fight with your significant significant other over their lack of devotion to the workout plan yeah. or diet. Like what a silly thing right. to well, argue like about. Any other profession, like you know, somebody coming home and they know that they work on cars, and it's just like well, why haven't you fixed it? You know, it's it's just a different <laughs> dynamic. Yeah. You know, at that point to where it, it like oh get to it. You know, it's like this this sort of it's not there's not a whole lot of urgency. Uh, and so to to actually get somebody else involved, I highly recommend. And this is something that, um, you know, I did. Uh, jo- I, Justin trained my girlfriends. <laughs> yeah, I trained his girlfriends. You know, uh, Jerry trained mine. Yeah. You know, like so um, that was. And it, I have a unique uh, situation because I started out training my wife before we were even a couple. And uh, I realized right away this is going to be unprofessional real fast. Yeah. And so I, I, I sent Spot, her off. Spotting her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, dude, yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't. That I might fall down. Then. Hurry up and grab. Yeah. Me. No, I knew I was like really professional, but also I was like very much like, dude. Yeah, like this is going to be a thing. Um, and so I, 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 yeah, I got somebody else to train her and like kept tabs, but. Um, down the road, it was like only until just recently, actually, where like Courtney has been asking me a lot more about like what she should be doing, what kind of food she should eat, like what, like how her training, how, how her posture looks, like like form, technique, like all that kind of stuff. Uh, I just kind of like waited. I waited for that opportunity. She was like, you know, really into kickboxing at the time and would, would ask me all these questions why her knees and her back hurts. And I'm, and I'm like, I had to be real. I'm like, this is why, and you're not doing this, that, and the other, and then I just leave it at that, and then walk away. Yeah, uh, it, it really it's up to them to then you know follow up and and want to be educated on that subject. Yeah. Twenty four Hour Fitness used to do a really cool thing. If you if as uh, we had it, we used to get uh, training sessions for half off. 
So basically, you're just paying to cover the the cost of of the trainer and stuff like that, and the company's not really making any money off of uh, off of you you getting personal trained yourself. So I always bought it for all of like every girlfriend trained with like my best trainer at the time. So Justin's trained one of my girlfriends because he worked yeah. with me during that time that I was uh, dating her. I trained a lot of people's girlfriends. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I would like here. <laughs> yeah, I would. I mean, if they were coming to me and they were asking that, I would say, listen, uh, you know, I, you're far better off. I'll get you my best trainer, and they'll they'll do this, and you know, and they'll coach you help you you'll you'll do better and it always worked out much much better that way i don't want to be that person mm. like you said or you alluded to sal like it ain't that serious like it's more about our relationship and like blending my work and job especially if you take it seriously into that it can it, strain the relationship yeah. it yeah. depends on the people like jessica loves when i train her in the gym she really enjoys me telling her what exercises to do watching her form pushing her and motivating her um i am not a great client uh, for for someone else to train, I'm just not. I've been working out so long and training myself for so long, and sometimes she'll give me critiques, and I can I, I'm not as receptive, and she gets annoyed, and so we've had these conversations. So it depends on the person. I would do terrible with that. There's yeah, no way. yeah. Like imagine, like yeah, if you, no you know, way. Yeah, yeah, no way. I'm no just way. not. That's, I'm why not a good I don't, that's why I don't even work out with workout partners. Mm -hmm. like, I don't. I don't need your opinion on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know I'm not a great client. I know it. I know I'm not a great client. I mean, yeah. there'd be very few people that I think uh, would be able to train me. Um, and you know, so well, that's you know. an interesting topic. Uh, do you have like in mind like somebody you would actually allow to kind of run you through some workouts? Oh, God. Uh, you know, the only I way I can't even think of it. Yeah, I know it's tough. No, the only way I could is if I was uh, pursuing something uh, specific and I was looking for exactly yeah, like, like so. Let's like say MMA training, or yes, or like, yes. That's Olymp where I'd be. Or like okay. Olympic lifting, exactly. Right? So yeah. I'm, I'm, I, too. I am not by any means, uh, you know, proficient in Olympic lifts. And I know there's far Sonny better Webster, right, right, right. There are far better coaches out there. I would 100 percent hire one and love to have one teach me. Yeah, and traditional I would be, resistance training. Yeah, I can't think no, of anybody. Bodybuilding gonna, coach. Yeah. I can't think of anybody. Phil Daru or yeah, or like PJ performs. If I'm trying to like actually jump higher, you yes. know, like so I would do that. Yeah, like if I was going to do a jiu-jitsu tournament, I would probably want to work with a coach. Yeah, you, coach it would me. have to be a very specific goal that I have that I'm aware that this person's far more educated than yeah. I am on the. But general health and telling me what. What I need to do get the yeah. fuck out of and here. And I'm just, yeah. you're just you're so set in your own way and what you do, and you feel like you know your body. And I know I'm a pain in the ass with that. So yeah. you, you gotta have that conversation. And I think the key is not to take it so seriously. I think when you take it too seriously, yeah, have fun with it. Oh, I've made the mistake. You know, you're, yeah, that you're, was my mistake. You're out to dinner, and then they add, they order something, yeah. and then you're like, oh, you sure <laughs> so you much for the diet, huh? <laughs> now you're now you're just let an their own guilt uh, talk to yeah, them. Yeah, now you're just yeah. an asshole boyfriend or husband, <laughs> especially if the waitress hears you. Yeah. <laughs> I got that look once, like, did you just tell this bitch what's not to eat? They're <laughs> called oh, but, servers, but you so. understand a trainer yeah. too. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> stupid. Uh, anyway, look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio, so come find us on YouTube. You can also find us on social media. You can find us on both Instagram and Parlor. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug, the producer, at Mind Pump Doug. Besides what, what most people think, uh, this is really best for beginners. Oh, so, it's a great exercise for beginners. You know, for beginners, when I think of like how I used to train clients, right? So I avoided exercise like this because they were difficult. Later in my career... Things like the squat and the deadlift began to become the center point of all of my programs.